how we're going to start is we're going with the requirements what is our functional non functional requirements then we talked about consistency availability as i believe most of you should be knowing about cat error even if you don't i'll just brush up a bit then we'll go for estimate requirements plan server versus p2p architecture web socket versus long polling versus short polling then we go for the persistence in storage like do we have the permanent storage do we don't have permanent storage etc etc then we talked about three message scenarios i'm 100% sure majority of you have used whatsapp or facebook messenger or maybe both of them right <laughs> everyone hope you're keeping well and staying safe this is Hafsa Andrew and I am working as a community executive at Recro wherein we are working towards building an exclusive community for developers to help you get connected with like minded people build your network and grow professionally so those who don't know about what Recro is it is a developer focused platform helping developers to meet the right opportunity by connecting them with fast growing startups such as Kyofit Odan Swiggy Dunzo etc so welcome to Recro Talks again and today we are doing a webinar on designing WhatsApp with LL, HLD and LLD, so low level design and high level design. Our guest speaker for today is Devang Sharma. Devang is a full stack, senior full stack developer in Meta with 4.5 years of experience. He has done his fellowship in NASA. Devang mentored over 20,000 developers on DNA, DSA and system design. He's also a top quarter finalist for 2020, 2021 and 2022. So thank you so much Devang for joining us. You may go ahead and say hi to the audience. Thanks, Apsa, and what a wonderful audience that I have. Looking forward for a wonderful session. So before I get started with the webinar, I would like to make some announcements. So you can post your questions in the question section and we will take up uh, in the last 15 minutes or maybe partly to the session uh, with the presentation of Devang. And we'll be rolling out poll in between, so please make sure to answer them. Keep your notepad handy so that you don't miss all the takeaways of, and learnings of this webinar. And please do tag Devang, tag Rekro, tag me on your post. And we will look forward for your learnings from this webinar. And people who are joining us live, please make sure that you do not hold back on your questions. And I'll take up the questions so, uh, parallelly to the presentation of Devang. And I'll make sure that your questions are answered from the speaker. So thank you so much. And yeah, I think uh, we can get started. Cool. Thanks, Absa. I'll take it from here. So before I move here, let me just clear one thing, guys. There is no presentation as such which I'll be giving because I am personally not a fan of PPTs and slide decks. Well, no offense to any product managers, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of PPTs or all of these things, right? We are going to do some hands-on discussions. I have the system design. We'll talk about the high-level design, then we'll go into individual low-level designs. Okay. I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Just let me know in the chat if you guys are able to see it. There are two sections, as you can see, one is for the chat section, one is for the Q&A section. If you have any doubt related to what I will be discussing, you can put in a Q&A. Otherwise, in the chat section, you can have for any normal chat where you want to discuss. Quickly, let me know in the chat if you guys are able to see. Just type yes in the chat if you guys are able to see my screens. Come on, guys. I appreciate quick response. Yes, as we call low latency. Anyhow, coming back, I'm getting very quick responses and I see number of people are also rising. I was discussing with the panelists that we have total received over 600 plus as we stand. So I'll just, just take one or two minutes to interact with you guys and I'll quickly move on to the WhatsApp one. Okay. I'll just take a bit of intro for you guys. So I'll get to know. As we have got over 600 plus suggestions as per my knowledge. So first tell me, what was the intuition that you guys joined this? Like why you're interested in the system design? First of all, what is your curiosity level? I want to understand. The expectations out of this session, what were you thinking to join from the system design? I've seen your intro already. Some of you are senior developers, some of you are software developers, some of you are students as well. So we're very glad to write you. We use it in our daily life developments. Okay. What else? What was the intuition to join this session? Let's be quick to understand architecture. I was asked this question. Okay. I was not expecting this, that you're looking for answer to interview question. Okay. That's fine. For interviews. Okay. To learn something new, understanding the complexity involved. There is complexity, no doubt. What else? Trying to understand how this works. Okay. This is a good answer to learn for good companies works. Okay. To learn how they develop and maintain the code. Well, this is system design, not exactly coding, but that's fine. Okay. Scalability. That's a good answer to go for. I love all your sessions. Thank you. What else? Curiosity. 
okay there is curiosity also that's the reason of curiosity i want to know scalability is the biggest challenge cool so i'm getting multiple reasons that you guys are here some of you wants to go for interview some of you are here because you just want to learn something new learn something new maybe and some of you are just here for curiosity that is good other of you have given the answers like scalability how to handle a scale and all and i think that is that doesn't make sense because the scale that we the whatsapp operates or the messenger operate it's a very very massive scale so i think that's a very good answer to call for anyhow all the answers are good i'm not judging anyone of why you have joined here what's your intent right and coming in terms of your background i think i have already read the judges from there so i have, I have senior people joining there junior people joining there are people from all experience groups joining okay let's quickly deep dive into what we are going to build today and what is going to be the flow of the session we are going to dip down into the high level design and if time permits we'll go into the low level design also for whatsapp or messenger system design which is chat application now understand one thing whatsapp and messenger are very different in a way i'll come to that question later but i'll tell you whatsapp and messenger these are very very different in terms of the normal design because the way messenger is designed is completely different the way whatsapp is designed what is the fundamental difference we'll come back to that when we'll come back to the detailed architecture okay that is something which we are going to build today part number 1 part number 2 how we are going to start is we are going with the requirements what is our functional non functional requirements then we talked about consistency availability as i believe most of you should be knowing about cap theorem even if you don't i'll just brush up a bit then we'll go for estimate requirements client server versus p2p architecture web socket versus long polling versus short polling then we go for the persistence in storage like do we have the permanent storage do we don't have permanent storage etc etc then we talked about three message scenarios i'm 100% sure majority of you have used whatsapp or facebook messenger or maybe both of them right so there are various scenarios when you are the sender and there is a receiver and you both are online how does the flow works in that case when you are the sender receiver is offline how does the flow works in that case and last part when you are a sender you yourself are online then receiver whether it is online or offline doesn't matter right how it works in that case and then you have eight part which is group messaging then we'll talk about why do we need to store the status for some time that is mandatory and then we'll go for asset delivery what is cd and optimization etc then we also see the whatsapp functionality which is last seen then we'll go for monitoring and logging this is not a functional requirement but for any good product that you're going to build especially for the scale of which at whatsapp operates or facebook messenger operate it must be very monitoring and you have to you have to obviously log all the things and consistency across multiple devices this feature is very recent very recent in the sense if compared to all other whatsapp features this is very recent because initially you were main active on one device for example one mobile or one ios or whatever it is right one device but now you can use the whatsapp across five devices at the same time you can use across five devices i can be connected with my mac i can be connected with my phone i can be connected with my android phone or ios phone or whatever and obviously that it is a last in service how we are going to build this so this is going to be the complete flow we have and it's very very difficult to complete everything within one hour but i'll try my best whatever we can scale up to or whatever maximum answer we can scale up to i'll try to answer questions and then i would prefer to keep your answer in the chat as well one more thing guys i would love to give access to all of you to speak but it becomes very very difficult to all of you to speak and to answer your question so the only medium of communication that we can actually go for that is going to be the chat medium and as again i always say i'm not a big fan of like a normal or the traditional classroom teaching where i'll be making some notes you guys will be writing down i don't do that i will ask you not to do that keep the session as much interactive as possible do not wait till end of the session that you'll be asking the questions at the end and then you forget what you were going to ask at the moment itself try to answer as try to ask as many questions as i prefer to answer as many as i can answer okay so keep the chat session more interactive as going well if everybody clear with the instruction just give me yourself provide the notes after the class if everybody clear just give me clear in the chat i just want to see if the instructions are clear or not cool i appreciate this quick response guys let's start with this cool the name whatsapp very first time when you hear this name whatsapp recording can also be provided it's already being recorded on youtube so it will be there on youtube as well okay anyhow coming to whatsapp are we going to learn what is actually happening in real whatsapp we'll be studying an ideal design well it's a combination of both if you are asking me like the actual service which are used there that i cannot share with you but how its overall diagram looks like that i can share with you okay anyhow coming to the whatsapp part whenever you hear the word whatsapp or the application whatsapp the very first thing that comes in your mind is chat application right chat application very easy to use chat application right anybody knows 
what is the current scale at which whatsapp operates anybody you might can make a guess you might not make a guess the very first thing that you heard about whatsapp okay everybody is using whatsapp everybody is whenever you share contact the very first thing you do is you connect with the person you drop them a whatsapp message nowadays the thing is like people used to drop text messages earlier now you get somebody's numbers you first drop a whatsapp message that is the skill that you are actually having right now very easy to use chat application not just a chat application you use it for your voice calls use for video calls as well it's not just limited to chat as well so let me just correct myself not just chat application you are commonly using for voice call also and you are using for video call also okay now i asked a question what is the estimated scale that you guys believe the estimated scale or if i talked about the total user base this total user base has crossed 4 billion total user base has crossed 4 billion you might not even realize how big this scale is so let me just give you some numbers to make this scale do you know what is total population of earth total population of earth total population of our planet is roughly around 8 billion that is higher than 8 billion roughly around 8 billion okay almost 50% it's actually more than 8 i am not sure with the exact number but yeah, it's something more than 8 approximately 50% of people total people which are available on earth they are using this application that's big or that's how massive the scale is just to be clear i'm talking about the user base i'm not talking in terms of daily active users right daily active user depends on it some people are not daily active user but we are talking about the total user base that is about 4 billion people this is the kind of scale on which whatsapp is operating and this is the kind of scale we are trying to build a system for or design a system for okay that marks the context what are we going to build today okay quickly then moving on to next part what are the requirements let's define some requirements whenever you build any products obviously you are going to have some requirements the requirements are usually divided into two parts one is called the functional requirements fr in short functional requirements which are fr in short second is non functional requirements or nfr in short whatever you like non functional requirements okay let's talk about this functional and non functional requirements functional requirements are those which are the feature requirements which are going to be there non functional requirement means something which is expected out of it for example it has low latency it should be very highly available it should not have any lags it should be highly scalable etc etc coming to the functional requirements when we think of whatsapp obviously it should support what one is to one chat one is to one chat should be supported what else you have the group chats also so it has to support group chats also what else do you only chat on whatsapp no what do you do you actually send image also you send video also or whatever file sharing system that you can think of it can be gif or whatever it is right it is file sharing system okay what else you can see the status by status i will specifically say the word story you can see the story of a particular person which is valid for 24 hours okay what else you can obviously use calls and videos which includes voice call and video call okay both the functionalities are included what else it should also tell you the read receipts yeah payment also payment is not part of this discussion but yes we can discuss that payment also it also includes read receipt what do you mean by read receipt how many categories of read receipt you know how many categories of read receipt you know correct three different categories all of you use whatsapp everybody knows about three different categories what are the three categories quickly tell me first is sent second is delivered third is sent right everyone knows single tick double tick and a blue tick single tick double tick and a blue tick right this part what else do you have there is something called last seen time of user the user it's your choice like if you want to share your last seen time or if you don't want to share your last seen time but this is also functionality this is what we are discussing for today's scope or for today's discussion we can say yeah the profile and metadata that is fine profile metadata status that is fine and to an encryption that is for that is for the chat application that is obviously will be there end to end encryption will be there in end to end means what end to end means what end to end means the chat is encrypted at the client end also it is encrypted at the server end that is what you mean by end to end encryption okay what else not just user to user technically it's client to server so at the client side it is send encrypted while it is being transmitted it is encrypted while it is delivered to the receiver then also it is encrypted it is decrypted at the receiver side that is what you mean by end to end encryption okay 
And there are other functionalities also, for example, WhatsApp business where you can have a shop just like your Facebook shop or Instagram shop and so on and so forth. So those part we are not taking into consideration for this design. But yes, WhatsApp business, we can include that also. What else? Then we have backup and all that is included, multiple device functionalities. Synchronize multiple device functionality to be precise. Synchronize multiple devices functionality. This much functional requirements is too good. Like we have to discuss about each one of them. So I think this one is too good. Yeah, when we say chat, we talked about forward, we talked about deleting, we talked about replying, and all of that is included in the chat, right? All of these are functions on the tab. If I talk in terms of feature, feature is chat. On that, you can do everything. Online status is also determined by this last in time so that you can check whether the user is online or not, right? Now, what are the known functional requirements? Known functional requirement means very first thing any chat application you build, any chat application you build, what is the first known functional requirements? The first known functional requirement is very, very, very low latency. Okay. What do you mean by latency? It's not like I send you a message, you are online, and you receive that message after 10 minutes. It doesn't make it kills the purpose of chat, right? If you're chatting it, otherwise I would have directly called you. Otherwise, I would have directly called you. By the way, we are talking about the latency. We are not just talking about TTL. TTL is something else. We are talking about latency. Okay, yes, correct speaking, the right is one side. Second part, we'll talk about cap here. So I'm just marking it as here. And third part is here is it should be highly scalable. The scale that we are operating here, look at the scale, this 4 billion, it has to be very, very highly scalable. Now, why did I put a cap here? Why I'm not discussed it? I'll discuss it right now. No drain battery. I don't think any application will drain battery apart from certain application which uses high memory of ROM. Battery drain or drain battery has nothing to do with what how scalable the application is. Okay, coming to the cap here. Why did I put cap here specifically? We are going to have to discuss something important before moving forward. How many of you know about cap theorem? Just answer yes or no. How many of you know about cap theorem? No. Those who know, please, those who know, please say yes. Okay, some of you know, some of you don't know. So quickly define it. In any distributed services, any distributed services, CAP theorem states that you can achieve only two out of the three in the CAP. What do you mean by CAP? C, A, P. These are mnemonics. So obviously they're going to have full forms. This is consistency. This is availability. And this is partition tolerance. Okay, partition tolerance. Cap theorem indicates for any distributed system, which is working on distributed services, two out of three things you can achieve. Either it can be consistent, available, partition tolerance, two of these things you can achieve. Now, whenever you talked about distributed services or distributed architecture, the very first thing that provides you, it provides you partition tolerance. By default, it provides you partition tolerance because it is distributed architecture. One is already there. Now you're left with the choice between two. So either C or A you need to make. Based upon this, we have two different kinds of distributed systems. One is called the CP systems and one is called the AP system. Okay, P is always common. P is partition tolerance, distributed architecture, P is always be there, right? Now, either you can have high consistency or you can have high availability. You cannot have both, right? Because P already have partition tolerance. Now you need to make a choice. Should I go for consistency or should I go for availability? This is a call that you have to make for any system that you will be building. Any system means only the distributed systems. No distributed systems, you will not go for it. But for all the distributed systems, you will go for this. This part clear so far, those who know CAP, those who don't know CAP, I'll try to answer in a very simple format. This part clear to all? Okay. Now, coming to consistency availability, let's understand this before we jump into solution. Like, should we choose consistency here or should we choose availability here? That part will come once you clear with what is consistency, what is availability, right? Consistency means all the nodes that you are having, right? Nodes mean it can be various servers, it can be various machines, whatever nodes that you are having in your server are in sync with each other. They have to be synced with each other. Let me give a very simple example. Let's say you go to a cash dispenser. I think in India it's called ATM machine. Cash dispenser or one moment. ATM. Don't worry, you'll get all the notes. So don't worry. You have a cash dispenser or ATM machine, right? Now, what do you mean by consistency? Consistency means you go to ATM one, you go to ATM one, and what you do in ATM one is let's say you have withdraw 
$10,000. One moment. You go to ATM machine and you have withdrawn $10,000. If you withdraw $10,000, if it is not consistent, you go to ATM too. It is not showing you updated balance. It is not showing you updated balance. That is what, that is where you come is like, this is not consistent. If you take it from one node, I'm not in that sense. I'm talking in terms of ATM machines. I'm talking one ATM as one node. You do one transaction at one node. All other nodes are not updated. That is what you call as they are not consistent. Okay. So it has to be highly consistent. Otherwise you will keep on withdrawing the money every time your balance will never be updated. Right. This is what you call as not consistent. Okay. What do you mean by availability? What do you mean by availability? Availability means if the system itself is available or not. For example, sometimes you might have seen you're trying to access a website, you're trying to access any resource, it is not giving you any response. So if a resource is not giving any response, that is when you say it is not available. It's not like it will never give response. For some moment, momentary time, it is not giving any response, right? It means it is not available, right? Classic example of this is 404 error. You might have seen 404 errors where you get like you're not able to connect. Sometimes 403 also comes. 403, 403 is by the way, is a completely different, but you'll see sometimes you're connecting to a website, but you're not able to connect website or whatever particular API it can be, right? Resource not available, basically. Partially or momentarily, it may not be available. That is what availability is. For some time, it will come available. Consistency and availability clear to all. Consistency and availability clear to all. Error throws by system are considered as not available. No, no, not, not that way. Error, not error throws. It is like you're trying to access a resource. The resource itself is not there. You're trying to access a resource, resource itself is not there. That is what you call as not available, right? Now, coming back to our use case. Again, CP versus AP, we need to make a choice. We need to make a choice specific to one system or whatever system that you're building. Coming to our choice, what do we want? We want to support a chat application such that it has to be have very low latency. Now we need to make a call. Should I prefer consistency or should I prefer availability? That is for sure, I cannot have both. Consistency and availability, I cannot have both, right? So what do you mean by, should I make a call of availability versus consistency? Now, which one should I pick? Why we need to make a decision? We just discussed about the cap theorem. Those people are new. We just discussed that those people who are new. In terms of distributed database, cap theorem states, partition tolerance is already given by the database. All you have to give one is, you need to make a choice whether you're going for high consistency or you're going for high availability. Only two by three you can satisfy in distributed databases. Okay. Anyhow, distributed architecture. So what do you think? Should you prefer availability or should you prefer consistency here? Availability, availability, availability. Yes, we have given the requirements. We've already given the requirements. What is partition tolerance? Partition tolerance or the fault tolerance is if you're connected in distributed services, the fault tolerance is limited or you cannot have the fault tolerance. Ideally, non-tolerance. Can you share example where availability isn't important? We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that example. Banking, somebody has already given the answer. Okay. Okay, understand. It's not like not important. I'm not saying it is not important. It's like what you have to prefer, right? For some microseconds, if you can have a delay here, that is fine. Answer this question, guys, for WhatsApp or any chat application for that matter. Will it be availability or will it be consistency? What do you want? Availability, consistency, availability, consistency. I should have conducted a poll. Anyhow, let me, let me make you understand what do you mean by availability and consistency? See, if it is not consistent, right? What do you mean by if it is not consistent? Understand this. You, you yourself will give the correct answer. By the way, the correct answer is consistency here. Okay. But anyhow, let me make you realize what do you mean by consistency here? Not consistent means a person sends you a message you received in a completely different order. What does that mean? A person A, one moment, a person says, hey, Deva, let's go for walk. There's two messages I have sent. Somebody has sent me this message, hey, Deva, let's go for walk. If it is not consistent, now consistency also has two meanings, between the messages and across the devices. We are talking about between the messages. Across the devices, you can also contain. Between the messages, Suppose it is not consistent, I will say, let's go for a walk. I receive this first and it say, hey, Deva. Now, messages were sent in some order. Let's say M1 and M2. This was the send message. What did you receive? You received M2 and M1. 
this is what will happen if it is not consistent part one what will happen if it is not let's remove a typo here if it is not available what will happen for some time for some time some microseconds for some microseconds it has to be actually less than microseconds but i'm taking microseconds for same thing you will not have any response no response from server what does that mean have you guys ever noticed when you connect to what when you connect your mobile data when you connect your wi-fi whatsapp chat are not immediately pushed it takes some time and then it gives the chance agree or not you might have used WhatsApp. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sure all of you have used WhatsApp. So when you connect with mobile data or you connect with your Wi-Fi, it not immediately gets all the chats. It will take some time. Then based upon the decreasing chronological order, whatever chats have been there, it will show those chats. Older chats first, then new chat first, then new chat first, then immediate chat first, right? Now coming to this case. Now you tell me, I'm giving a use case. You yourself will give a correct answer, whether it is consistent or available. Will you prefer a delay of few microseconds or will you prefer the complete ordering you want you can you believe so can you have actually a delay of few microseconds to receive the correct order or you say no i don't want to wait anything i just want incorrect message what will you prefer minute delay will never go right minute delay will never go. we are we are very good engineers to build for we have prefer it built in the microseconds so it never go to minute so we'll prefer some microseconds delay, some seconds delay, whatever it is, right? Depending upon how scalable that service is. You want the correct order because some messages, if the order is changed, it completely changes the purpose of the message, right? So that is why here consistency prevail over availability. In this chat applications, consistency will prevail over availability. Okay. Yes, consistency means matter in the order message also. Yes. That's why I said very first thing, consistency means two things. Consistency can be across the devices also. Consistency means in between the service also, messaging also. So in this case, you will prefer consistency over availability. Even if you have to have microseconds of delay or some milliseconds of delay, that is fine. But you want to receive in the correct order. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Yes or no? Okay. So one thing is clear. Now I'm just taking this part, why I have kept as a placeholder. So I'm removing that placeholder. We have discussion here. We are clear with our functional and non-functional requirements. Part number one, what we want to build, how we want to build, that part is clear. So I'm making this done. I'm making this done. Now I'm going for estimate requirements. Estimate requirements is also very important to understand how many scale I would need or how many people are going to use my application corresponding to that, what is the scale I need to make. Now. Coming to part number two, first part we have discussed, which is here, requirements. Part number two I'm discussing, which is estimate, estimate requirements. What okay, of estimation we have? In terms of estimation, what do we need? The very first thing is we need to know what are our daily active users. What do we need to know? What are our daily active users? Anyone knows what are daily active users of WhatsApp or make a guess about it. Total users versus daily active users is different. Total users versus daily active users is different. Very low latency is same as availability. Subjective question because latency are defined for a particular service. Latency can be subjected to what service we're talking about, right? So always low latency are sending in terms of our only chat that it can be considered otherwise not. Around 60%. As per April 22, and the data can be more, can be less. As per April 22, I'm quoting, it is 2 billion daily active users. I'm talking from April 2022. That's the most recent data I can find on internet. But if anybody has more recent data, you can do it. Anyhow, we are just keeping an estimate, estimate efforts. 2 billion active users on an average, on an average, we're coming to that, why it has so much latency. We're discussing that. Let's build the architecture first, then we'll go for each individual latency. Okay. CDN. CDN, okay. And CDN is not primarily about latency. CDN is about quickly finding up the data that you're sending. Or it is used in the asset service to be very precise. Coming in terms of chat latency, if you're talking about chat latency is all about web socket management. All of them is based upon web socket. I'll come to that part, then we can have discussion. But yes, CDS definitely used that is for asset service. Asset service means images, videos, graphics, whatever you're sending. Now, coming to daily active users, it is 2 billion. On an average, one user sends 50 messages. On an average, I'm talking about per day. So what is total number of messages you will have? Total messages per day. 2 billion into 50, it is 100 billion. All agree? 100 billion per day, you are having. 
simple mathematics clear to all okay now just we have talked about the messages per day now assuming assuming let's say out of this 100 billion let's say under average size average size of per message is 100 bytes this is the average size i'm talking about okay so total size of messages per day that will be what that will be 100 billion that you are sending right now into 100 bytes that will be what 100 billion into 100 bytes that is going to be 10 terabytes per day easy not easy well, but it's 10 terabytes per day this is the kind of storage that you are looking for and this is per day and remind you again when i'm say about this message of 100 bytes i'm just talking about chat messages i have not included photos i have not included videos i have not included metadata i have not included compression i'm just talking about pure chat messages if you include all of that the number will go even bigger okay anyhow we are talking about estimated storage here so we are not talking about the exact storage here 10 terabytes per day 10 terabytes per day that is the scale that you are operating in terms of database now if i talk about five years of chat history I have to store five years of chat history. This is an example I'm taking. That will require how much? One day you are having 10 terabytes. 10 terabytes into what? 365 days in a year. You can count the loop years, or it will not make much difference by the way in calculation. Into what? For five years. What will that number be? What will that number be? That number will become 18 petabytes. This is the kind of storage we are talking about. 18 bytes. Hope WhatsApp is not showing much. I will answer that question, but coming to this, it is not storing. Okay. Anyhow, this is 18 petabytes. Again, this is a rough estimate we have. Why a rough estimate? Obviously, more customers will keep on adding or more users will keep on adding, more messages will keep on holding. So this is kind of an ever increasing database. If you pretend or if you pretend in the sense, if you try to store in a database, this is going to be ever increasing memory. 18 petabytes you need for five years. Then you can obviously multiply for whatever number users. What does it not include? I want to specifically mention here. We have just talked about the chat message. It does not include any videos, any images. After that, you have compression on the top. No for compression, no metadata. I have not counted the metadata where it is sent from, how it is sent for, which time it is sent for. All of that is there, right? In metadata, you have the name, whoever the sender, not necessary name. You have the UUID. From that, you can have a look up for name. From UUID, you have the location you have the timestamp and multiple other things longitude longitude in the location all of these things we have not counted in our size for this one okay we are just talking about the estimate requirements so this is the kind of scale that we are going to deal for this part clear to all that is the kind of system we are going to build so this is what we are going to deal for everybody clear with all this part clear step number two come on guys be quick Step number two is clear. Now I go to step number three. Estimate requirements part is done. Now I'm going to talk about few basic common words which are there in system design. Any kind of system design you go for, you must know about this. Third part is polling. Even before going polling, let's talk about what is polling. Then we'll talk about short polling versus long polling versus what? Short polling, long polling versus web suffix. These are very, very fundamental things whenever we talked about any system, especially for any chat building application. Even for any application, these are very fundamental things to know. What is polling? Anybody guys will be quick. What do you mean by polling? Polling means whenever it's a technique by which client will ask the server for any new data, right? I hope all of you know about client server architecture. Yes or no? I hope all of you know about client server architecture. Everybody knows what is client server architecture, what is peer to peer network or P2P architecture. Cool that. Moving to polling. Polling means client asks server for new data regularly. Right now, what is regularly? That is ambiguous one. We are going to define that. That is what you define in total polling. Now, there is three different types. One is short polling. The one is long polling. And last one is going to be web sockets. We are going to discuss that and why a specific type is more useful for me. Now, 
what do you mean by short falling what do you mean by long falling what do you mean by right sockets what does short falling means short falling says is just an i'm writing as pin short is an edgex edgex based timer at fixed delays what do you mean by fixed delays it means what the client is going to do is client will make a request to server client makes a request to server now it is going to be fixed delays right now you are going to have repeated calls you are going to have repeat calls every x seconds or whatever configuration that you have given after every certain number of time maybe seconds or milliseconds whatever it is it is going to keep and call calling the client calling the client client is calling the server calling the server calling the server if you have any new response or not now understand one thing if you are repeatedly doing the repeated calling what is going to happen not every time you are going to have a response right server can respond in two ways server will say okay if i have a data i will return the data i will return the data if i have the data if i don't have the data i will return null response empty response null response whatever it comes okay now understand this very clearly if you are having short falling every time after every certain millisecond microsecond whatever configuration you have given if you are keep on doing that keep on doing that what is going to happen is majority of the time majority of the time it is going to give you null response or empty responses or downside of this majority of request have empty response okay part 1 what is long calling what is the purpose of long call short calling clear to all short calling clear to all so majority of the response that you majority of the request that you are having these are having empty responses so it's a wastage of resources what do you mean by long calling let's talk about long calling long calling obviously client will make a request to server because we are talking about client server architecture so client is making call to server now what is going to happen in this long calling when client makes a call to server it has two ways server can respond again in two ways and respond in two ways just like it has two ways here it has two ways here also respond in two ways what are the two ways if it has some data if it has some data then it is going to just respond and return the data if it doesn't have a data then instead of sending empty response what it does it it holds the connection or keeps an open connection keeps an open connection with the client and obviously it will return whenever it has return response whenever it has when it has a response okay that is what is going to keep it this not necessarily need to be tcp it can be http also does not necessarily need to be tcp okay so what is this long calling is like if you have the response right now give the response right now if you don't have the response right now instead of returning empty response or null response you wait when i will have a response i'll give it to you so think it this way it has it has kept an open connection with the client the moment it will have a response it will return it if it doesn't have a response it will periodically keep on checking okay now this is very very helpful in certain devices certain devices in the sense very helpful in certain kind of systems much much better than short point culture right because instead of having return empty response now you are having at least an open connection so whenever it have it you get the response but when the browser response expected time it will fail not response expected time but yes i do agree with that it is going to define some time after which it is going to go for it some certain time you are going to define after that it will go for this so maximum or time out time it is called by the way time out time is be defined so after time out time let's say you have taken 10 minutes or 30 minutes whatever time out time you have defined you will need to create a new request client will make new request okay if you don't get within that time out time then you have new request and obviously you can keep this time out time as configurable as possible sounds good i'm covering quickly the basics of system design guys because we have to start with actual whatsapp also now last part is web sockets what do you mean by web sockets web sockets is full duplex communication or communication channel over a single tcp connection how many of you know about three way handshake how many of you know about three way handshake very popular term okay some of you know it that's fine cool anyhow moving to this those who don't know it please do google it guys because if i keep on explaining each and everything it's going to take way more time than i'm expecting anyhow 
coming to the full duplex communication channel over single TCP. What does that mean? Full duplex means client can connect with server. Server can also connect with client. What does that mean? Duplex means two side, right? It's a two-way communication. So a server can respond, a client can also respond. A server, client can send message to server, server can send message to client also, okay? This is very, very helpful because it is very resource intensive, very, very resource intensive, very lightweight. What do you mean by lightweight? What do you mean by lightweight? Lightweight means you're not having much memory constants on it. Part one, part two, you're not taking your complete logic part into it. That is what you call as lightweight. So not much logic is kept it here. Just providing whatever it is used for providing very lightweight. Third part, it is, it can actually give you good security model. Security model in the sense, you might have known about origin based security model. If anybody has worked in security, if not, feel free to Google this terms later. They provide a good security model. That is why majority of the chat application you will see, they work on web sockets. Okay. Intensive in resources. Yes. Yes. Resource intensive and lightweight contradict each other. Correct. Memory, when I say lightweight, two things are there. That is going to be in terms of memory constants. Okay. That is what you call as lightweight. Now, good security model, example of origin based security model or some other security model that you can read about. This good security model actually evolved from origin based. Cool. These are the very basics of what is falling, what is short falling, what is long falling, what is WebSockets. Okay. Is WebSocket different from TCP UDP protocol? No, no, it works over TCP only. Works over TCP only. It's not like different protocols. Any use case of using long falling over WebSocket, there will need to store each connection details also. Yes. In terms of we are going to use in our WhatsApp also, we are having both web sockets, we are having long term also. We'll come to that. Okay. These are the basics of system design. That's why I've completed this done. And what else? This part is done. Okay. Now let's move to the architecture of WhatsApp. So I'm just going to share my screen to show the architecture of WhatsApp. Then we'll go into each of these services individually. These terms were most important to know because if you don't know these terms, you will not understand a single thing about the architecture. So I have to clear these terms. Let me just share my screen. Let me know once you guys can see it. Can you guys see the architecture? Can you guys see the architecture? Okay. Now I'm going to deep dive into the architecture part. Moving into this, let's talk about the fundamentals. What do we have in this architecture? Then we'll go in detail. So I'm going to take this, move this out. I know for first time user, it, can, it might look very, very difficult or cumbersome, but it is not. Let's make it quite easy. What we're going to focus right now is we're going to focus on this part and let me change some other color also. Let's make it blue. This user one is user one, U2 is user two, U3 is user three. This is load balancer. This is WebSocket handler one. This is WebSocket handler two. This is WebSocket handler three. And here you have WebSocket manager. We'll go to each one of them. What does that do? This group message will be connected with this group messaging service, which we'll use later. Our focus for this part is this area. We want to understand what is this WebSocket handler? What is this WebSocket handler? What is this WebSocket handler? What is this WebSocket manager? And what is this message service? This is a key area that we're going to focus on right now. Okay, this is what we're going to focus on right now. Now, moving to this, let's go back to our sublime text. Moving to sublime text, here I am. Okay, we just understood there was something called web sockets, there was something called web socket handler. Let's talk about in detail. Architecture in detail. Okay, very first thing that you have seen is there were some web sockets. Also, one thing, guys, this particular image is taken from code curly, so the candidates to the respective owner. Anyhow, coming to the architecture, what do we talk about in terms of architecture is there was something called WebSocket Handler. What do you mean by WebSocket Handler? Let's talk about this. We just mentioned that WebSocket Handlers are just a lightweight servers. This is just a lightweight server. What does that mean? You're not building too much logic into it. You're too much getting too much memory into it. This is just a lightweight server or a machine, as you call it. A machine has how many ports? A machine has how many ports? Anyone knows? One machine has how many ports? Come on guys, 65K, why 65K? Why not 100K, why not 500K? These are very basic questions. This is something I believe everybody should know. How many ports a machine has guys? Power of two something. Yeah, what is that two? 
And yeah, guys, read about this. This is something very important. Any server that you're talking about, any machine that you're talking about, that's what it is. Input output, both the ports and counting ports, right? On an average, a machine has, technically speaking, it is 65, 236, right? But 236, not this much, 236, okay? Anyhow, total ports that a particular machine or a particular server that you say, you say it has 65K. All of the total ports are 65K. You're using for input, you're using for output, you're using for internal usage, whatever, total 65K. Now, on an average, if I take that internal usage, I'm keeping 5K ports. On an average, I'm keeping 5K ports. So what are the pending ports or remaining ports? The remaining ports become 60K. So one, one WebSocket handler can use 60K ports. Now, what is WebSocket handler actually doing? A WebSocket handler is just telling you what a user is connected to which WebSocket handler. That's all. WebSocket handler, WSH in short, keeps track of what user is connected to connected to it okay so this websocket handler it keeps a long calling or an open connection or long calling with what with each user now obviously if you're dealing with the scale of 4 billion users or let's say 2 billion active users one websocket handler cannot do that so one WebSocket handler can manage up to 60,000 users, right? So now total number of users or total number of servers that you will need, total number of WebSocket servers that you will need, you can have 60,000 or total number of users divided by 60K. That is how you can predict what is the total number of servers you will need. It means the server is 65 ports and handle this many requests. Yes, one port and one request. One request and one port, to be precise. Now, not exactly 65K because some are already reserved for your internal purposes. That's why I've already kept 5K ports for internal purpose, whatever you're using in internal usage, connecting with cross the services also, right? So which is open to public 60K, so it can handle 60K concurrent request. One server can have 60K concurrent request. So 60,000 users, 60,000, yes, you will get these nodes. 60,000 users, it can manage at one time, right? Obviously 60,000 is not our user base. Our user base is 2 billion, that is on active usage. So we'll need 2 billion. So obviously total number of servers we will do, it's going to be more than WebSocket handler. But how it overall works, that is what I've told you. Okay. After going to this part, what do we need? Second part that we see, there was something called WebSocket Manager. Okay. Now what is that WebSocket Manager? WebSocket Manager stores the mapping. What is the mapping? The mapping is in every WebSocket handlers, what is the user sphere? And obviously these WebSocket handlers, they will be distributed across different geolocations. Just to mention here, they will be across different geolocations. Why? Of course, to reduce the latency and improve connectivity also across different geolocations. You cannot say all my WebSocket handlers will be in California, all my WebSocket handler will be in London or in India or wherever. That is not fine, right? So you have to distribute across the databases. Now, across this storing the mapping, what kind of mapping it stores? It stores the mapping. WebSocket handler one, what kind of users it is storing? Let's say one to 60K, I'm just giving in terms of ID. WebSocket handler two, what kind of users it is storing? Which is two, let's say 61K to whatever, 120K, so on and so forth. All of these mappings are stored inside the WebSocket manager. This part clear? This part here, that is what WebSocket Manager does. Okay. Now, how many of you know about cache? How many of you know about cache? Yes. What is the purpose of cache? Quickly tell me. What is the purpose of a cache? Layer between database. No, no. Purpose of a cache. What is the purpose of a cache? Speed. Reduce time. Quick response. Be quick, guys. Reduce DB height. Very, very layman terms if I talk about, obviously there are going to be many things. You have to look something, you have to look something, you don't want to query the database, something which is mostly queried or something which is very frequently queried that you store in a cache. I hope everyone knows that. Everyone knows that, yes, correct. Reduce DB hit and latency. So cache is to reduce DB hits and latency. Now, moving to this part, if user is online on WhatsApp, these ports are still occupied on WebSockets. They keep an open connection. That's why I said it's an open connection. When the user will come back, it will join back. It's always an open connection, right? Now, anyhow to this, it reduces the DB hits and latency. What do you mean by reduce DB hits and latency? If I don't have to check every time in the database, I have to have a cache here. 
So that is why this WebSocket manager also have a Redis, okay? To have a quick lookup. Quick lookup over what? Quick lookup over these two. Which particular user is connected into which place? That is why we have a layer of caches. Technically speaking, we have three different layers of Redis. The more layers you will have, the more it is going to have a quicker look time. But anyhow, that is the purpose of Redis here. Now moving on to next. We talked about WebSocket handlers. What is the purpose of WebSocket handlers? We talked about WebSocket manager. What is the purpose of WebSocket manager? Now I'm going to something more important before I take the architecture diagram again. This was the architecture diagram. We are clear with what does WebSocket does, WebSocket handler does. It tells me, okay, this WebSocket handler says this U1 is connected to me. Obviously, there are 60,000 more other people who are connected to me. This U2 is connected to me and this U3 is connected to me. This WebSocket manager is keeping a track. Okay, U1 is connected to this, U2 is connected to this, U3 is connected to this. Until now, everybody clear? Until now, everybody clear? Come on, guys, be cool. Cool. Now I go to the next part, which I told about memory service. Why there is a memory service and what is the purpose of this memory service? Try to understand this part, why there is memory service. And this memory service is interacting with WebSocket handler, not with WebSocket manager. It is connected with WebSocket handler. What is the purpose of this? Let's understand. Going back to Sublime, coming it here. There is something called memory service. So let me take it here, connect it here. Third part, we talked about memory service. Memory service is your, as you can see, memory service means message service. As you can see, it is a repository of, a repository of what? A repository of all messages in the system. A repository of all messages in the system. What happens? This WebSocket handler that you have, it keeps a connection with, keeps connection with what? WebSocket manager. WSM, let's call it WebSocket Manager also keeps connection parallelly with message service. Why do we do that? When we'll go for use case, we'll understand better. Again, repeating WebSocket handler, obviously it has to connect with WebSocket Manager to understand which, part of, which particular person I need to connect with. Also in parallel, it keeps with the messaging service. Now, now let's move to something else. So this message service is a repository of all the messages in the system. In order to have that, you can also filter. You can have multiple API. You can expose multiple API. For example, you want to know filters like based upon user ID. I want to know the message based upon user ID. I want to know based upon message ID. I want to know based upon delivery status. Whatever API filter you want to create, you can create it here. All of these will be exposed at message service. And as service is the one which will be exposing your services. This part clear? This part clear? Okay, now moving to next part. Now comes the major important part is, if message service is the one which is storing my message, so does WhatsApp stores my message? What do you guys think? Does WhatsApp stores your message? Just answer yes or no, what do you think? If you have a message service, so is it storing my message? Okay, understand one thing guys. Backup has nothing to do with WhatsApp service. You are completely mixing two other things. Okay, wait for a moment. Backup has nothing to do with your WhatsApp service. You guys are, some of you guys are not still clear with persistence. What do you mean by persistent storage? Clear that part first. What is persistent storage in DB? What do you mean by storage in DB first of all? If something is stored in the DB and you're not deleting it, that's what you call as persistent. So it is available there, right? Now, you need to be clear about this part. Does WhatsApp stores it or does WhatsApp doesn't store it? Anybody can tell me, the fundamental difference between Messenger and WhatsApp. That is why I said we'll covering this part a bit later. Messenger and WhatsApp, what's the fundamental difference? Come on, guys, be quick. Messenger, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, what is the fundamental difference? The fundamental difference is your Messenger stores your chat. Your WhatsApp stores your chat only till delivered. And there is a reason for that also and then, and then delete it. Okay. Now, one thing to be clear, guys, backup has nothing to do with the memory storage. You're confusing the entire two different things. WhatsApp memory service, WhatsApp messaging service has nothing to do with the backup. Backup you are doing for you guys, right? Your backup is not even stored at WhatsApp. Your backup is stored in, in your Google Drive. Agree? Your backup is stored in Google Drive. 
Google Drive is owned by Google, WhatsApp is owned by Meta. Why are you confusing two different flows? It's not even the same company, right? Anyhow, moving to this part, WhatsApp stores your chat only till delivers. Again, when you mean by store your chat, doesn't mean that WhatsApp is actually reading your chat. It is always end-to-end -end encrypted. End-to-end -end encrypted means encrypted at the client side, which is your device, encrypted at the server side, which is at the WhatsApp. So nobody can have access to your chat. Nobody can have access to your chat. It is end-to-end -end encryption always. Anyhow, it's stored in it so that it can be deleted later. If anybody wants to test this, I would recommend, I'll go for this. DB that we use for is Cassandra. Why Cassandra? I'll go for that also. Anyhow, coming to this messenger, you want to prove it that whether messenger stores chat or not, just do one thing. If you have messenger in your application, if you have messenger in your application, just uninstall the messenger and reinstall it. What will you see? What will you see? You will see all the chats are as it is. You will see back all the chats. Not even a single chat will be deleted. Why? Because every chat is being stored. Uninstall and reinstall, you will see all the chats as it is. In WhatsApp, if you uninstall and you reinstall, what will you have? Only chats from backup. And doesn't matter how, wherever you have taken the backup, you can decide the frequency daily, weekly, or whatever it is, right? Chats from backup will be restored, right? If anybody wants to check it, you guys can check it, but do at your own risk. Don't blame me after it. I have told you WhatsApp doesn't store chat. It means it is the backup that you're having. From that backup, it will have. So what does that mean? During the process of uninstallation and reinstallation, what is going to happen? One moment. During the process of uninstallation and reinstallation, in that case, if a message comes, that will not be given to you. Want to try that? You can try that, but don't blame me for that. Okay. During the process of uninstallation and reinstallation, if somebody will send you a message, you will never get it. Okay. Anyhow, moving to next part. So one thing is clear that WhatsApp is not going to store the chat. It's going to only store the chat till the moment is delivered. Why do we need till the moment is delivered? Let me tell that also. Now moving to next part. In WhatsApp bad, it loads the message even after while it is off. It might be storing some new messages, I guess. There is always a client-side local cache. Right? So we'll talk about it. Why there is a client-side local cache and why it is required. The three use cases that I mentioned here, all these three use cases will help you understand. This part we have just understood. So whether you have to persist or you have to don't persist, please discuss with the respective interviewer or whoever you are coding that or you're designing that system. Based upon that, you can go for a suitable kind of database. Now, moving to this part, moving to this part, chat is stored in device. That's why it is gone when I restore. Chat is, chat is not stored anywhere, guys. Okay, understand. Understand one thing very, very at a layman time, if I have to explain. You have a backup. You have a backup in Google Drive, correct? You have a backup in Google Drive. It is not in your mobile. It is in your Google Drive, okay? If you uninstall the application, imagine for one case, imagine for one second, WhatsApp server was storing your chat. Imagine for one case. The moment you install WhatsApp, you will be connected with WhatsApp server. Agree or not? Common sense. The moment you install WhatsApp, you will be connected to your WhatsApp server. Agree? Now, if you're connected to WhatsApp server, why don't you get all the chats? Why is that you are getting chat from the backup? Have If you have ever installed, you might have seen, it says looking for backup. And there's a circle which is scrolling around, right? Which is like buffering looking for backup. Where does it look in the backup? It looks in the backup in the data, like the drive part. If it finds a backup, if it finds a backup, it connects it. If it doesn't find a backup, your chats are lost permanently. Your chats are lost permanently. Okay. WhatsApp is not storing your chat. Again, I'm repeating it in the service. It is only there temporarily till it is delivered. Why it is required? That also I'm going to come back. So WhatsApp is not storing your chat at all. Anyhow, coming back to this, now let's try to understand how the end-to-end -end flow works. So now I'm back on the screen. Now how the flow will work like. We talk about various scenarios, how the application is going to look like in various scenarios. So I'm going to take annotation here again and move here. User U1 is here. Let's say user one sends a message M1 to whom? M1 send it to user two. Now there are two cases, whether user two is online or user two is offline, I agree? Either the user two is, so sender is there, receiver is there, either the receiver can be online or it can be offline. So user one sends a message. So WebSocket handler will know, okay, it has sent a message to one. Now this WebSocket handler will make two things. It will make a connection with WebSocket manager to at WebSocket manager. It will make a connection with message service. In message service, it will store M1. It say, hey, I want to deliver to user two. Since it is not delivered yet, you please store M1. What did I tell you in the beginning? WebSocket handler is a lightweight. You don't keep messages here. You don't keep any server things here. It is just a lightweight server. Okay. No logic needs to be kept here. 
So message service says, okay, give me M1. I'm going to store it what? I'm going to store it transiently. Transiently, I'm going to store it till it is delivered to user two. This part clear, why it connects with message service, yes or no? Why WebSocket handler connects with message service, yes or no? This part clear, why it is not clear? Understand this, this is a lightweight service. It cannot store the message. Who can store the message? Message service. Who can store it? Because it has a database, which is Cassandra here. Why we don't go for Cassandra? Well, it's a good discussion to go for which database to go for. The very first thing is the kind of scale that you're reading, you're reading for always ever going database. And then you are going to have multiple read queries. Cassandra is the suitable database for that, right? In terms of distributed databases, Cassandra is one of the best databases that you go for, which can offer you ever-growing database. Well, there's nothing called ever-growing, but efficiently speaking, very quick over time, it can give you ever-growing database, right? That is why WebSocket handler will say, okay, I want to send M1 to U2, please store it until it is delivered to U2. This part clear? This part clear? Okay. Now, moving to next. Why it connects with WebSocket manager? Why it connects with WebSocket manager? What does WebSocket manager stores? WebSocket manager keeps a track of which user is connected with which WebSocket handler. Agree? We talked in the very beginning, manager is just storing which it's connected with which handler. Does this WebSocket handler one knows that user two is connected to WebSocket handler two? Does it know? Does a handler know what is connected to other handler? No, a handler doesn't know. A manager knows. I'm coming to this. Kafka is not here. Kafka will go for group service. We'll talk about Kafka. Coming to this part, very first question, this handler doesn't know that U2 is connected with this. That's not the task of this handler. That's the task of manager. Handler does not know. Handler just know one thing. I'm keeping an open connection with whatever my 60,000 users. That's all it knows. And that's all it is focused on, right? It doesn't know who is connected with whom. It's the manager task who knows, okay, this is connected with this. Now, it will make a call to WebSocket manager. He'll ask, hey, WebSocket manager, I want to send to U2. Tell me, where is U2? So WebSocket manager will say, hey, U2 is actually belonging to WebSocket handler 2. W S H two. Let's make it. Okay. It will say it is connected to WebSocket handler two. Now what will happen? It will get to know user U two is WebSocket handler two. It will get to know messages M one. From both of there here and here, it will come now. It will pass M one, and it will pass to U two. This part clear to all. This part clear to all. Okay. Scenario number one, we're going to talk about all the three scenarios. Scenario number one, when user two is online. When user two is online, it will be delivered immediately. It will be delivered immediately, right? Now, will there be multiple WebSocket managers? Usually we have one WebSocket manager on the top. We have a Redis clusters, multiple Redis clusters are there. For example, three Redis clusters we use. So we have more than one Redis clusters, okay? Now. If someone installed WhatsApp and used it once, then deleted the app, the connection with WebSocket server still remains open if the person never used WhatsApp. If you've deleted it, then there is no point, right? Connection will never do. Understand, what do you mean by connection? Connection means you opened the application and you connected it. That is when you get to know last thing. Okay, this is also a good question to ask. Let me ask you guys one thing. Why long polling is used here, not short polling, we already discussed. Long polling, keeping an open connection, short polling will going to have this Ajax request, which will go for multiple times, response real data and empty response. You don't want empty response multiple times, right? Not useful. That is why we go for long polling. Anyhow, coming to this, this, this good question, have you guys seen last scene, last scene on username in terms of WhatsApp, last scene on this or whatever time on this? I'm just asking a very simple question. Just answer me what was for your understanding. When you say last scene at that time, is it last seen when the user has turned on the mobile data or the Wi-Fi or last seen when the user has on the WhatsApp, switch on the WhatsApp? What do you think? Two things are there. What I'm asking is, let's say I connect, I am connected to Wi-Fi, but I haven't the off, but I haven't opened the WhatsApp till last night. Okay. So what will it show? Will it show last seen right now or will it show last seen on the whatever date? Switch on the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp, use the app. When connection is closed, turn off WhatsApp. Last time I use WhatsApp. Okay. Your connection, what you're calling as connection here, that is determined when the user has opened that. Well, technically determined by events for that we have Kafka. But yeah, coming to the common answer, the answer is when you have opened the WhatsApp, that is what is used for your last scene service. That is what is used for your last scene service. Got it? Now. Last thing when the WhatsApp is closed, technically speaking, whenever you have opened the last app, right? 
no, not the internet, not the internet, then WhatsApp app specifically you have to open. Okay. Anyhow, well, there are two cases client side architecture. If I talk about one is called the foreground, one is called background. I'm not going detail into the client side architecture. We already have too much on the server side to cover, right? So let's not go on the client side as well. So now the use case number one, user one was online, user two was online, M1 was delivered to this. How did it deliver? WebSocket handlers connected with WebSocket manager. It asked me, hey, where should I send the message? It said, hey, due to is connected to WebSocket handler to connect it there. Temporarily stored the M1 here. If M1 is delivered successfully to U2. Now, when M1 is delivered to U2, how will it know? This M1 is delivered to U2. Now, first case is this. Let me clear all this and make it this. M1 was delivered to U2. Now, if M1 is delivered to U2 and U1 goes offline, so you send a message to someone and let it go offline. What will happen now? Did you receive a receipt that you have sent a message or he has received, he or she has received a message? No. If a sender sends a message and goes offline, till that part, it must be present in this M1. Why? Because even if F2 has received the message, it will send an acknowledgement. That acknowledgement needs to go back to this. But the acknowledgement will go back once it will come online, right? You cannot send offline acknowledgements. So when it will come back, then it will see, okay, it is delivered. So that's the first thing you are talking about. This is sent, this is delivered, and this is blue tick. I mean, I cannot, all of them are blue, but just for example, this is blue tick. This is sent, this is delivered, and this is blue tick. It means it is red. Okay. Now, once U1 receives an acknowledgement that, okay, U2 has successfully received the message, whether the user has turned on the radio set or not, that depends on Bluetooth, right? It has nothing to do. It's user choice. They want to do the radio set or they want to turn off the radio set. The moment the sender will receive an acknowledgement, hey, he has received that condition. Now what will happen? It is going to delete it from the message service. M1 will be deleted from the message service. This part clear? This part clear to all? Yes or no? Okay. Again, repeating. I just explained why store message. Okay, we are not storing message on server first of all. We are storing message in this DB. Why do we need? Can't we just store some ID? ID again, you will need a mapping. For that, again, you will need a DB, right? Obviously, if you talk about in Cassandra, it's not just a normal complete store. It's not like a relational database. You have to store everything. It is a distributed database. So based upon ID, we'll have a corresponding message. But only by ID, this message service is different. This database is different. M1 goes to the database. M1 just, this message service, just keep a mapping. That M1 will go to U1 or M2 should go to U2. I'm talking about Cassandra. It stores the M1 or the complete message as it is. It will return a key for which it has to be done. So this message service is just acting like a cache. Okay, so this is M1. M1 should go to U1. M2 should go to U2. M3 should go to U3, etc. etc. Now, again, I'm repeating when it will be deleted from the database. It will be deleted from the database once the sender receives an acknowledgement. That acknowledgement can be double tick or that acknowledgement can be blue tick depending on the case, whether this particular person has reduced it on or reduced it off. This part clear? This part clear? Let's say the handler sees M1 is online. M1 is message one, so let's not confuse it. One by one, guys. M1 is message, U is the user. Let's not confuse the things. Patch is the message from my service and M1 goes offline. User one goes offline. It still seems like storage wasted. It's not storage wasted at all. It is the efficient way to do it. Okay, anyhow. So we are going to delete it from the server. Storage wastage will be, I'm technically not storage wastage because that's a trade-off you have to make. You want to store permanently or you don't want to store permanently, but we are deleting only for, we are storing only for transient phase until it is delivered to this. First use case, U1 was online, U2 was online, U2 delivered the message, U2 has received the message. It has sent the acknowledgement, acknowledgement go back to U1. Once acknowledgement go back to U1, that is when you delete it from the message service or Cassandra basically. This part clear? This part clear. Okay. Let's say message U1 is online, fetches the message acknowledgement from user and U1 goes offline. Delete it. See, user has seen this. U2 has received it. U1 received the message. After you have received the acknowledgement that my message is delivered. Now, whether you are online, whether you are offline, it will still be deleted. Okay. It is stored till acknowledgement. It is beyond theoretical transient phase. It is a transient phase. Like transient is also a subjective term. But just to answer your question, until and unless till the time. The sender has received the acknowledgement that my message has been delivered. It has to be in the database. This part clear. We are not storing the data, but while we're scrolling, we get exact date, exact data for all the dates visible up. Guys, chats are end-to-end -end encrypted, right? End-to-end -end encrypted means what? Your chats are end-to-end -end encrypted. 
Commerce service, but some friends in cloud services. I cannot share that details, but I'm pretty much sure on the public page, you can find all the details there. What is the monthly expenditure or what's the quarterly expenditure? What is the role of Kafka? Kafka is used in group service. I'll come to group service later. This is what we are talk talking about, non-group service, which is messaging service. Group service is completely different. What is it used for? End-to-end -end encryption, yes. End-to-end -end encryption. Encryption is at the client side also. Encryption is at the server side also. That's why we have end-to-end -end encryption. Web socket connection not service. I'll come to this case, guys. We are running a bit out of time and I have another class. Anyhow, coming back to this, we are back here. Three use cases I want to very clearly define. First use case, sender and receiver both were online. We have talked about this. I'm just taking these three use cases down also. Copy this, paste it here. One moment, guys. How messaging service web sockets are connected? RPC calls. RPC, RPC, remote procedure calls, RPC calls between the services. Okay. Anyhow, coming to this message scenarios, sender and receiver both are online. If sender and receiver, one moment, guys, one moment. When do you delete from database? Delete from database. You delete from database when sender receives acknowledgement that message is delivered. Message is delivered. Not a yeah, double tick technically. It may be blue, may not be blue, depending upon three districts. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Yes or no? Okay, step number one clear to all. Now let's go to step number two, which is sender is online and receiver is offline. Sender is online, receiver is offline. So come back here. Who is the sender? Sender is U1. Who is the receiver? Again, let's talk about this case. Sender is U1 here, receiver is U3 here. Sender is U1, receiver is U3. Okay. Now, Moving on to this, same flow will happen. Exactly same flow will happen. WebSocket handler, it will go to WebSocket, it will make a connection to WebSocket, make a connection to messaging service. In messaging service, it will check WebSocket handler 3. Now, since it is offline, what will WebSocket handler 3 will say? WebSocket handler say, hey, it is not connected to me. Agree? Since it is not there, this connection will break. This connection will break when the user goes offline. Agree? If there is no connection, the user is not itself online, that this connection will break. So WebSocket handler says, hey, it is not connected. It will return no. I mean, whatever is corresponding status code, it will return no. No LLD will not be covered. I don't think we have time for that. Okay. So it is going to return no. The moment it's going to return no, that's fine. That's fine. The moment it's going to return no, what is going to happen is this message, let's say the message was M3. This message S3 will keep on storing this Cassandra corresponding ID will be mapped in the message service. Now, till the moment R comes back, R means U3 comes back. Now, U3 will come back. Now, it will establish a connection. It will update this. Okay, I've received it. It will update this. I've received it. Now, it will transfer the message of M3 back to U3. Once it transfers, it will go for the acknowledgement. Acknowledgement goes back to U1. Now, you can delete from the database. Exactly the same flow. The only thing is, once it is not available, once the user is not connected, it means there is no open connection. When there is no open connection, it is going to update. Okay, there is no open connection further. Wait for it. Once it is once it is back, then it sends the acknowledgement. Once it sends the acknowledgement, you delete from the database. Okay. Till WhatsApp is open, U3 will always be at WS3. No, no, nothing always. I've just given an example, right? WebSocket handler is corresponding to what user is connected to what WebSocket handler. Till WhatsApp is open, the WebSocket handler on with the server. That's very much configurable depending upon each individual service. I cannot share the exact time, but due to obvious reasons, but yes, it is configurable. Now, coming back to this, what will happen? This is second part. We have seen, we have seen the flow here. One moment, guys, one moment. Step number three, last part I'm taking, I'll discuss all the edge cases. Sender is offline. Now, the sender itself is online. Let's say you are sending a message to someone, you are not connected to it. Does it matter whether the receiver will be online or offline? No, it will doesn't matter. All agree? If you are a sender, you are itself online. If you are not online, so whether the sender is online or offline doesn't matter at all, right? So when sender is offline, in that case, what will happen? There is no data because the data will not go to any of the messaging service, not will go to the WebSocket. There is no connection at all. So if sender is offline, in that case, what will happen is your local storage will come into here. Local storage means local caching. Caching I'm talking about. Have you guys seen when you are offline, you try to send a message, you will never see in this single thing. You will never see this single tick when you are offline. Try it out. If you want to try it now, just turn off your mobile data and try to send a message. You will never see single tick. 
once you are connected then you will see a single agree agree i hope all of you have experimented with that stuff a lot so now what is going to happen till a connection is established till a connection is established it will be stored in your local storage which is your cache till the connection is established okay now guys moving on considering we have sharp 10 minutes to left i have few things to cover which i would like to cover one major important thing i would like to cover is these were the most important part how does the chat communication happens we have discussed all the details what two major important things are passing why storing message status is important that is also i have done group messages is pending and the asset delivery is pending let's talk about group messaging and asset delivery one moment when you go for group messaging and asset delivery try to understand what happens blocking is super easy for guys when you block a user you have completely flown the so whoever user has block anyone in that case it will never make a connection to this so let's understand it this way user u2 let's say u1 has block u2 right u1 has block u2 so whenever u2 will try to send a message to u1 it will never even connect with this this web socket manager this message service will not even store that message it will not go okay. that is what blocking does that is why whenever somebody blocks you you will might see a single tick you never see a double tick because double tick is for acknowledgement and acknowledgement will never happen message service will not let that happen right that is why you are blocked if you can manipulate message service then you can send message to the block server block user whatever it is anyhow coming to the asset asset service guys this is the last part not last part second last part i would like to take which is equally important what do you mean by asset service what do you mean by asset first of all asset means users are not just talking in terms of chat application right user are also talking in terms of applications which are messages it can be videos it can be images etc etc agree it is not just the messages which are being talked about it is also the videos it's also the images it's also the gifs emojis whatever it is now these asset service it keeps a track of whatever that multimedia data is there it is going to keep a track it has two component one is s3 so in s3 also you are going to have a compressed data in s3 also you are going to have a compressed data what is cdn what is cdn anybody what is cdn cdn is used for having a quick look up or cdn is used for whether the content has been frequently used or not those content content delivery network whatever content is used lot of times or very frequently those will be fetched from s3 to cdn what can be the example the best example is you might have noticed whenever there is a political event or there is any sports event or there is any religious events same poster is circulated every time agree same poster is forwarded many times circulated many time and so on and so forth agree now does it make sense to every time store that with cdn whatsapp uses uh i cannot tell that in detail you can see the common cdn providers so you can look for that i cannot reveal the name of any cloud providers okay anyhow moving to s3 let's call it generic specific services let's not go in division into each individual provider coming to s3 now moving into the s3 what is going to happen is if that application or if that image or a video is forwarded many times many times if it is forwarded does it make any sense to store in the database every time so u1 is sending the same to u2 u2 is sending the same to u3 u3 is sending the same thousands of people are sending the same image no then it makes more sense to instead of storing the actual data or actual image or video you put it in s3 first and you make a id out of it if you have used s3 you will definitely know corresponding to every data you put you get a message id message id or whatever key id corresponding to that key id if it is present then you put in the s3 otherwise you don't put the s3 and whatever is the common usage you put in the cdn so cdn solves two things here first is based upon different geo location it reduces the time difference and second is based upon this based upon a one thing which is commonly used in that case it is going to help check for the key first if that key is not present then it is only stored in the s3 otherwise don't store okay now does whatsapp store the messages everything related to chat is end to end encrypted so when you say stores if you are talking about temporary transient storage yes do you mean by store that it can read no everything is end to end encrypted end to end means what client side encrypted the moment you click on send it is encrypted there the moment the person receives received that is encrypted there that is what you mean by end to end encryption okay anyhow moving to this in terms of cdn i think i think the person was asking about a specific cloud provider so yeah in general you can say whatever provider is provided by meta anyhow coming back to this let's go back to our chat 
this is here we are what if i send a gif gis same thing will happen any kind of data that you are sharing across same thing will happen okay now moving on to next these are the major things that i have to discuss in this session we have discussed right anyhow so asset delivery just one moment i have talked about this use of cdn i have talked about this uh not this talked about this optimization of highly shared contact talked about this right what is last thing here one moment images are deleted after it's delivered then how come we see the same ad of product in every platform understand one thing we are not talking about advertisement here very first thing and second thing is it's not we cannot read your chats or any other service cannot read your chat because it is end to end encrypted right but there are certain events or there are certain signals which can tell okay this is the kind of event you'll be interested in it's not just about whatsapp there are many other personalized thing that you do right if you look at instagram the very first thing it says is your ads are personalized and you agree to that you don't even read that constant which is asked for terms and condition mostly people read that so it's not just like your chats from whatsapp is exported there never blame any organization like that it's our end to end encrypted just to clear how whatsapp track which is forwarded many times same thing i just explained okay everything that you put in s3 everything that you put in s3 it comes with id now you can use a hash of that image now that also you can optimize it instead of using one hash you can have a permanent hash now or instead of one hash you can have multiple hashes because one hash can lead to what one hash can lead to collision so to avoid that you can have multiple hash so multiple hash is same less collisions if one particular image has multiple hash and then it still has common it is pretty much high chances that it is the same image same image multiple hash code even after multiple hashes you get the same id technically it is called hash code same hash code 99% chances there it is the same image or same kind of data which is being transferred across right now that it knows profile is stored permanently in whatsapp no nothing is stored permanently okay what about counting forwards towards past yes there is always a trigger that's part time coming in terms of monitoring and logging there is always a counting for tracking whether it is counted you might have noticed have you seen forwarded many times have you seen forwarded many times anybody in whatsapp you get a forward message you also get forwarded many times message so there is a certain number which is fixed that if it is forwarded more than this times let's say example 1000 then you say forwarded many times and if someone has forwarded you just see forwarded right so that also is check for okay to answer that question so monitoring and logging that's the last thing consistency i've already discussed last in service we discussed monitoring and logging i want to discuss obviously building such a large scale system it will require some good monitoring and logging what do you mean by good monitoring and logging for example we don't want any kind of lags to be there so let's say if my disk utility that i'm keeping if it is greater than 80% then what i do if disk utility at 80% i will spin another db instance things like this that you can trigger whatever you are using their services you can do it accordingly okay jenkins you use or party use you can do it there okay what else cpu utilization is there let's say cpu utilization greater than 85% you can generate automatic triggers that you can do easily in jenkins or pretty much any of the similar services now when it will clear the s3 is there any particular time well it runs it runs for a frequent times and take an example let's say after every two weeks or three weeks it's going to delete it but again even in s3 it is end to end encrypted every chat every message every image every edu every gif whatever you're sharing everything is end to end encrypted so don't worry about that in group chat same person from the message country message the same website manager as well as the same factors what that's we are very short on time quickly answering the group service it's very difficult to cover the group service but anyhow Group service is a complete topic in itself. Coming to this, one moment. There are chats here also. Anyhow, coming to answer in the group service, how does the group circuit versus group service works based upon this Kafka event, right? The also this Kafka event is also used for analytic service and the user activity tracking. Now, this Kafka event, when you send a group message service, it goes to Kafka. That is why it sends an event to this group service. So whenever any user who has put a message apart from that user so this kafka events will make a track of all the users in a group that's a 10 users in a group and a has sent the message so it will remove a from it so 10 minus a all of them will receive a message you will not receive the same message that you have sent right common sense you will not receive the message meant that you have received so 10 minus a that will be used for n minus a let's make it n number of people in the group 
that will assume that is what Kafka is used for. Second use of Kafka is I told you very specifically when you say last seen, you are tracking last time the user has opened the application. You are talking about last time the user has opened the application. Now, how does it get to know that the last time the user has opened the application? There are two kinds of events. One is the user events, one is the app events, right? This is counted in app events. App events. User events means what? User means connection is created and all of these things, right? User opens, closes, or do something with the app. That is used to track the last time, right? App events, whenever the push, whenever the user is connected with the database or connected with the connection or not connected with the connection, that is what it is used for. Last thing, this is which I'm covering here. Let me clear this as well. Moving to this. The last scene service, which I want to discuss, it is there. Last scene service, there are two kinds of events. One is called the app events. One is called the user events. Okay. Now, what do you mean by app events? For example, a connection is established. A connection is established. That is where the two terms come in, app in foreground, app in background. You might have seen some application runs in background. Some application runs in background. That is what we are talking about, app events, foreground versus background. User events means what? When user opens the app, user opens or closes the app. Okay. This is the event which is used for last scene. Your last scene is always talking about the user events. That user events is pushed into Kafka. Based upon these events, you get to know when it's going to be the last scene part. Cool, guys. We are quite ahead on time. So I'm just going to have a quick recap and then we are going to have this end session. I share this image and whatever assets that I've used here, I'll share this. Pretty much everything that I wanted to discuss, I've discussed this, right? This consistency across multiple devices, I'll push, I'm publishing an article on Medium. I'll share it on my LinkedIn as well. There you can have a detailed description. How SRTP is used, how each device identity key is used, and how it is consistent across all devices. It's not like, also one more thing, when you receive a call and you're online on your iOS or Android or you're online on your Mac also, you'll receive the calls on both. But when you answer on any one of them, it stops the other part. How does that happen? All of this, I'm writing a detailed article here. So you can connect on LinkedIn or you can share my articles on LinkedIn. I haven't published yet. I'll publish it in some time. Then you can take it from there. Cool. So whatever I wanted to cover, the basic things I've covered, not the basic things, quite the fundamentals things I've covered. Requirements, consistency, availability, estimation, client P2B architecture, web sockets. Why do we need to store a DB? Do we need to store a DB permanently, like in terms of Messenger, or do we need to store transactly, like in terms of WhatsApp? All three use cases we discussed. We talked about group messaging. Why storing status is important. Asset delivery we talked about. User study and optimization that we talked about. Last event, which events to track? Which events to track? User based events to track. Okay, not the app based event. So this part is also done. What next we have? Monitoring logging. I have told this. Consistency from multiple devices. I'm writing an article on Medium. You can check it from there. Last in service, we have done this. It took 90 minutes now, although I have completed this. Cool, guys. Hope you have Messenger also end to an encrypt. Yes, messages are end to an encrypt, but it is stored. End to an encrypt, but it is stored. Okay. Storing and encrypting has nothing to do with each other, just to be clear. Cool, guys. Thanks for joining. I have done from my end, giving it back to Afsa. Hope you guys have liked the session and have we made it rush to another meeting. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I hope all the questions are answered. Uh, Devan, did you get a chance to look at the QA tab? I think there were some questions. Yes, I've answered all the questions on QA. Okay, yeah. And uh, for someone who's asking, uh, will we will this session be recorded? Yes, it is recorded. And uh, we are also live on YouTube. So you can just go back and have a recap on the live sessions that we are going with this webinar. And we'll, uh, in two to three days, uh, we'll edit the whole webinar and we'll also post the full fledged webinar with the proper editing. Notes. Uh, I think uh, Devan can share me the notes so that I could add it in the YouTube description. And from there, you guys can pick it up if you want to. And I'll also make sure that um, I'll drop down Devan's uh, LinkedIn and also Medium links uh, in the YouTube description. So uh, you can also go ahead and have a look at the new article that Devan was talking about. Okay, guys, that was a that was a, uh, that brings us to the end of this wonderful session. I would like to thank each one of you for joining us. Hope you learned something new from this session. We will look forward for your post on LinkedIn along with your key learnings and takeaways. Don't forget to tag Rick or tag Devang and tag me in your post and let us know what's something that you have taken away from this session today and um, the learnings that you had from this webinar. Also, thank you so much, Devang, for joining us. It was awesome having you. Thank you for taking out time from your schedule and sharing such an insightful information with us. Sure. Thank you.
Uh, okay, before we end the session, there are a few announcements that I want to make. We have created a developers community called Rebase on Discord. You can join a community for JavaScript developers to unleash your true potential. And if you are someone with two plus years of experience, you can get a chance um, to connect with the fellow developers and also uh, you can connect with them, talk to them and reach out for help. The link uh, is uh, dropped in the chat and uh, I'll just drop it again so that you can just go and quickly say hi to the audience over there and connect with the experts in the industry. And uh, we have made a LinkedIn post about the session to comment your learnings with this post. And uh, the link of the post is also in the chat. You can let us know what are your key takeaways from the session so that uh, we'll be more than happy and we'll bring speakers like Devang uh, for our future events so that you're learning some more upskilled. We have, uh, if you have more questions, you can follow and connect Devang and me on LinkedIn. And if you want more sessions on the same topic, we can uh, we'll look forward for getting the speakers like Devang so that you can deep dive into the similar topics on a more advanced level. If you're exploring career opportunities, Recro is hiring passion developers. You can check out uh, Recro's current opening and we'll make sure um, that any of your friends or you or your colleagues, if anyone is looking out for a change, we'll make sure to place them in the high uh, a great startups of the country. To stay updated with such events, you can follow us on social media. You can follow Recro on Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And um, the links are in the chat. You can quickly go and have a recap of the session. You can also check out our previous webinars and let us know um, your learnings from those webinars. That's all for the session, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Hope to see you in the next one. And take care, stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys.